Hello, welcome to Love in the Time of Hydra, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 10th anniversary podcast. We're coming to you live on a Monday, which means we are recording on October 28th, and I'm about to tell you what was going on 10 years ago today. For the sixth week in a row, All About That Face by Megan Trainer was the number one song. Get a new song! Uh, and a new, uh, brand new movie called John Wick was number one at the domestic box office. The Kansas City Royals defeat the San Francisco Giants in the sixth game of the World Series, tying it up three to three. We had some celebrity birthdays are not related to Marvel, but you know them from lots of things. Julia Roberts turned 47. Gwendolyn Christie turned 36. Or, um, Julia Roberts was 47. Uh, Gwendolyn Christie was 36. Matt Smith turned 32. Joaquin Phoenix turned 40. And Frank Ocean turned 27. Happy birthday to those people. But the most important thing that happened on October 28th, 10 years ago, was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2 episode of Fractured House. Aired on eight, ABC at 8, 9, 8 Central. Hi, I'm Jamie Girac. And I'm not used to being awake this early. But uh, I'm here with my co-host, my boyfriend, and my level 2 Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan, Tony Paletto. Hi, Tony. Oh, hi, everybody. Oh, it's <laughs> on, it's at 8 a.m. Oh, God. Uh, we got our coffee here. <laughs> Good morning. Um, but uh, you know what? We're happy to be here early because we have a very special guest. Oh yeah, we we are here because uh, our guest is coming all the way from the UK. He's a creator known for his breakdowns, reviews, recaps, Easter egg hunts on YouTube. You know him, you love him. Paul from Heavy Spoilers is here. Hello. I feel so uh, bad, right? Because <laughs> you guys could have had an extra hour in bed um, no. because the clock's changed, and it's. I, I thought it was going to be four p.m. when we were recording this, but it's three p.m. now. So I'm sorry. Um, nap time. I mean, all I. You, me, the guests, everybody listening, we could all just go zonk out, keep it rolling, you know, Maria? Yeah. Like, we'll just keep it, keep the <laughs> stream going. Yeah. Take intermittent well, YouTube run adverts now on pause screens, don't they? So just raking in. Oh, okay, one. sure. There That's it what is. Do. Yes. Yeah. Also, I don't have a job. I can sleep anytime today. <laughs> so, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, uh, Paul, I, I, uh, it's funny because, you know, you, you are known for spoiling. Spoiling is your game, uh, but we we gotta we gotta keep you in check today because we gotta protect Tony. Right. Okay. Uh, is that do you we'll, do you have, do you, I'm do you not feel telling pressure? You that Coulson's dead. What, <laughs> Son of a no. bitch. Um. Uh. But I, you tweet about Agents of Shield a lot. I see you post. That's why I messaged yeah. you because you're a, you're a fan, and so I want to talk about your history. Did you watch from the beginning? What what was what was your time with this show like? No, um, I think it was around Endgame. I really started watching. I, th I think it's in the, the the pandemic when we were like every YouTuber was just kind of scrambling for things to cover, um, and they were releasing a new. I think it was season six or season seven around that time. Um, so I covered all that, but obviously I had to watch everything in the lead up to it. Um, so it was around about that time, and then I, I really enjoyed it because I'd heard for so many years that it was the, it was bad. But I thought it was really good. Um, so I think I did a big MCU watch through, and then I would play the episodes alongside it. So, so when you had like, and I, just when you had like the Thor, the Dark World tie ins, obviously, you know, there's a lot of stuff that ties into the Hydra reveal. Um, I I'm sorry if I'm spoiling all this for you, Tony. Um, but <laughs> no, no, I think that's all. Was, You're good so far. Yeah. Yeah. It was, ni it was nice watching it alongside all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then you caught up and uh, covering it. Did when you when you got because that would have been the final season in, in the pandemic. Um, do you get a lot of pushback as a as someone who loves it? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah, re really weirdly, people like. But I often find they haven't seen it or they've only seen a, a certain amount of seasons. I mm. think um, I think it's kind of just got the reputation of being bad. And I think when people actually sit down and watch it, uh, I think they do actually quite enjoy it. Like, who couldn't love Ward? That review oh, was Ward. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I a lot of my notes today are just are just about me hating Ward. So much so much yeah. of what we're gonna talk about today is me rolling my eyes at Ward. But before we get to that, I want to say hello to everyone in the chat. Thank you to those joining us early and thank you to those who are joining us not early for your time. Um we we love that. Uh we do have a couple of exciting announcements. Uh there's no shield next week, but we'll be back on Patreon to talk about Firefly episode 10. War Stories, um, Five Pacific per usual. And then the following week, we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. writer Craig Titley on a talk episode seven, The Writing on the Wall. Uh, Paul, are you typing? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm, oh. I'm at work at the moment. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> well, that's okay. Just hit, so hit the mute do. button. Yeah, yeah, hit the mute button. Um, no, uh, let's see. Uh, Tony, tell the chat, uh, tell the chat the rules, give them those reminders. Yeah, yeah, guys. So, uh, just we were just saying to Paul, uh, if you want to talk about anything beyond uh, this episode regarding Agents of Shield, just write spoiler alert in there, and that protects people like me who are seeing the show for the first time. Hopefully, they're out there, don't want to spoil the show for for uh, level one and level two agents like myself. Uh, and uh, so this episode, Fractured House, episode six of the season was written by Ralph Judkins and Lauren LaFranc, who previously wrote two of my favorite episodes of season one, The Hub and Tracks. And of course, Lauren LaFranc is currently crushing it as the show winner of The Penguin. Paula, how are you feeling about The Penguin? I'm um, absolutely loving it. I think it, it's brilliant. I've seen episode seven now as a recording. Um, and yeah, it's really, really good. I, I can't, can't spoil too much, but I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I like that. I, I feel, yeah. uh, that's been generous. I, I'm loving it as well. I, I took a picture of, of Sophia to the salon, got my hair cut like her. <laughs> Just, I'm so obsessed with it. Um, so uh, our, in this episode, our seven main cast members are back. We've got multiple recurring guest stars back. Um, we've also got Tim Decay as Christian Ward, a new Ward up in here. Uh, Falk Henschel as Marcus Scarlatti, Brian T as a uh, Tashiro Mori, Brian Van Holt as the stranger in the tattoo shop, Melanie Cruz as Agent Walters, and Michael Enright as Julian Beckers. There's a lot of people in this episode. Um, Paul, what are your just kind of initial thoughts? Like, what would you feel rewatching this? How, about, how do you feel about this episode specifically? I, re I, th I really liked it. Um, it's kind of weird going back to it because I don't remember any of the context around it. And I was kind <laughs> of like remembering things. And it's weird because I have I don't really have many memories of the earlier. I, I remember season one quite well. And then there's like a gap in between where I'm, I'm trying to struggle to remember a lot of things about it. But it was nice being back. Like the whole thing with Fitz and um, what, why he, him and Gemma had fallen out. I was like, I've got no idea what's going on here, but I sort of remember it. <laughs> you just know you're feeling something. You're just sad. Well, I know what happens to Fitz at some point, but I couldn't remember if it was before this or after it. And it was kind of like, I don't, I'm not, I won't say in case it spoils it, but um, yeah, it was one of those he, things. He does have the brain injury from, from the bottom of the ocean. Uh, right. That, yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, Tony, what Classic. did you feel about this episode? Yeah, glad. So, flight times at Marvel. <laughs> Old Fitzy with his brain damage. Uh, no, I, I like this one. This is, it really felt, uh, it felt like a season one episode in the way that, I don't know, I don't mean that negative or positively, it, just, the, it was a very kind of a solid baseline um, espionage action thing. Um, it didn't, had, it had a very simple premise. It did the thing that I always like for it to do where it's going to drop a twist on you in the middle. I think this episode might have like been like, ooh, twist a little too hard about it, but I still it's a it was a fun ride. I like the I like the plot of the episode. I like I enjoyed the ride. I'm I'm really into the the like the relationship dynamics in this episode, like the Bobby and Hunter stuff, the Fitzsimmons stuff. But this is also like a little overstuffed. Like there's mm -hmm. there's like confusing things happening. Like there's double crosses, there's these plans that are being made. Uh, yeah. there are like there like there was a moment in the episode where I'm like Wait, who is Julian Beckers again? Like I've seen this literally ten times, and I'm in the yeah. middle of watching it now, and I'm confused. Uh, but so it's it's for me an an okay episode. Well, but, they, uh, they, the Julian Beckers thing, they kind of don't do themselves much of a service. Like the first, you're introduced to Julian Beckers on a news broadcast, like, uh, and it has his name at the bottom, and I, I was able to remember him, but like, it's not like we had an introduction to that character. He just seemed. They just the way they set him up. He's just like a talking head pundit on a mm -hmm. on a program, so you don't necessarily clock him or, or know he's going to be significant. Yeah. Um, all right, diving into it, we've got the opening at the UN. Talbot is is up in there, and then fake shield attacks. It's it's Hydra uh, coming in strong. Paul, uh, you say the know? UN. You say the <laughs> UN. I mean, I've seen the UN in movies and stuff, and it just that was a boardroom like a table. Yeah, it just looked like I don't know if many UN meetings happen like that. You know, I'm going like Wakanda forever. They have their big UN meeting where she, you know, they march in and it's a big room, big circular set. I don't, yeah. So it was the UN. Well, um, yes, because I wrote in my notes yeah. question mark, and then later May says the UN was attacked. So I had the same yeah, thought. I was yeah. like, on, okay. 
Oh no, I know it. I know it was the UN in the show. I'm just like, yeah. is it the UN though? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a pretty pitiful network. assembly. Yeah, network TV UN. Um, but the 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 weapons are cool. The um the mm. that they that Hydra's de devised. Like the I feel like all the budget went into that. That's why they mm. have such a teeny little UN. Yeah, yeah. I always feel bad when weapons kind of completely vaporize someone. It's like. I don't know why. They, I mean, it, they're still dead. You know, in um, the first Spider-Man movie, when Green Goblin throws that pumpkin bomb and it just completely it oh, turns right. the, the boardroom mm -hmm. into skeletons and they just kind of fall apart and die. I, I, though they're dead either way, I always feel that's more like you went you went too far there. You could have just <laughs> shot them and killed them. I know he'd be dead either way, but yeah. And there's that um, woman who dies at the end who gets one stuck in her. Who kind of oh that was sad. Still really, talk, they, they really went still talking. Way. Right. Mm -hmm. That yeah. speaking of Spider Man, that was like felt like him getting Spider Man getting dusted in Infinity War. Mm -hmm. That had that kind of energy. Uh, it does. It yeah. does have the, the dusting energy. I think it's still not as bad as when a couple weeks ago, uh, Donny Gill, aka Blizzard, aka Ice Boy, uh, turned a guy to ice and then just broke him. Like that's yeah. a, that'd be a rough way to go. Pretty rude. <laughs> Yeah, not very nice. Um, okay, so then we get to um, Gemma and Sky are watching Ward, and I think this is so funny. He gets up at five thirty on the dot every morning. No light, no clock, and he works out. And I just like I, I every everything about him just makes me roll my eyes. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I they need that, that in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why, why that detail? I, 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 I think they want, they still want to, they're still trying to make Ward a thirst trap. And uh, I'm sorry, I just, I don't think there's any coming back from, from, uh, from what he's become. But I also do think, I saw him doing the, uh, the handstand push ups. I was like, all right, I'm impressed, whatever. But I'll, I know uh, if I were in solitary confinement, I, I, I don't think I would work out. <laughs> like, I like, I always like the idea of it, of just being like, yeah, like I'll just refine myself because that's the only thing I can control. But I probably would just lay in my bed and cry. Uh, that'd probably just that'd be the most I can manage. Paul, what about you? Would you be working out? Yeah, prob I mean, there's nothing else to do, really, is there? He, he yeah, he's got no privacy. I think he's just show. I think he's sort of trying to win Sky back because he even does the old cliche: "I've I've lied to everyone. I never lied to you." Mm -hmm. Sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Gross. Uh, he's goodness. icky. Uh, um, if you want to see the old workout trope in action, go see the watch the new Wallace and Gromit when it comes out because I have some good right. things about that. Um, yes. So uh, this May comes in. Uh, Hy Hydra's attack. They're looking for revenge about because we had spies in their house. Um, and then we have a little cat mug bit, like which I really appreciate, just as uh, we're a cat house, you know, cat people over over here. Um, yeah. Uh, who Paul? Who do you think brought the cat mug from home? Um, I think it was Gemma, you know. I think she mm. does kind of seem like a cat person. I don't know if um, Chloe Bennett would have one. She seems kind of like too busy. She seems like a, a gym gym woman, you know what I mean? She's like, I'm too busy at the gym. To I'm working out. I need to get in mm -hmm. good shape because Ward's waking up every morning. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think yeah. I feel like it's somebody you don't expect. Like it's Trip. I think Trip is out there mm. drinking from the cat mug. Say Mac. Mac, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll never know. Mac. Mac was in it. I I don't know why. I always re remember him coming in in later seasons. I was quite surprised to see him in season two. Has he been here a while? He shows up in the first episode of season two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This I can't is a, spoil like, what's happened with him, but yeah, it was nice seeing <laughs> Mac. I was like, oh, Mac yeah. is my favorite character. Cool. Oh. oh, I love that. That's I was gonna ask that at one point who your favorite character is, so I love hearing that. Um also so we learn in the scene that the, the assassin who came through at the at the UN, the giant UN meeting, almost killed Barton at one point, which is um a heard that. And, yeah, and it made me I was like, wait, was he like in Thor and somewhere? And I forgot, but no, he he that guy wasn't. They're just doing an Easter egg thing. Mm. Yeah, uh, love love connecting it. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is when uh, we find out that the senator, Gasp, is Ward's brother. When they showed the little the name tag that said Christian Ward, Tony got a good laugh at that. And he goes, God damn it. Yeah, I don't want more Wards, you guys. <laughs> like, I, I heard enough about the mean one at the well. And the, the and I just like, I'm like, I don't, fine, fine. And, and of course, this guy sucks. 
I don't like the whole game of like which one do you trust. I'm like neither. I, what do you? Who cares? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Both from the same family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Both probably not good. Uh, Paul, did you? Uh, I was going to ask if you remembered all the well stuff, but you didn't have to because they brought it up 18 times in this episode. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah, I got the context of it. I was like, oh, he's just had a messed up childhood. Yeah. That's his brother. Yeah. Did he used to drown him, or did it his brother drown him? Don't even remember. <laughs> I love that yeah. he drowned him. He, dr- he drowned him all the time. No, he would, uh, according to, to to Ward Prime, I'll call him, uh, Big <clears throat> Ward used to bully him into uh, bullying Small Ward, uh, the littlest Ward, who we have yet to see. And maybe we never will. Who knows? I certainly don't. Um, and, uh, Am I spoiling it by saying, has Bill Paxton been in it yet? Uh, yeah. You are, yeah, he's he's dead and gone. You, you are not yeah, spoiling yeah, yeah. it. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. All right, okay. In real life as well, though, sad. Yeah, we didn't mean it like that. I'm so sorry. Yeah, what the hell? Oh, no, I He's like one of my favorite actors. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I couldn't remember if he was, had been in it because I know they did a lot of stuff about his his childhood tied in with him. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. yeah okay, I'm kind of, of placing it. It's weird watching yeah. these just, just picking Randomly. out a random episode and being like, season two, episode six, mm-hmm. let's watch it. It's funny when uh, like having people who worked on the show, like when we had Clark Gregg and stuff, because it's like for them, it's really been ten years. <laughs> like they don't, right, they yeah. don't know shit. They're, they weren't rewatching this like we are. Yeah. Um, and so, so you're you're not alone there. Uh, we have a like an, a little team of May, Bobby, and Hunter um, uh, heading heading to Japan, and I and I re- I just really like all the Bobby and Hunter stuff in this episode because um, like you know you look good, and I like the way he says cheers. Um, you know, heard you've been telling people I'm a hell beast. I just think they're cute. But the big moment in the scene is when uh, uh, Bobby asked May if she's ever been married. Tony, did, did we know that at this point? Did we know? No, May I wrote it. I said May Mary question mark exclamation uh-huh. point. But you know, <laughs> it's a very slight nod, and that's a yes. So uh, mm-hmm. I want to I want to know more about that. Yeah. Um, so Paul, to, to refresh you, Bobby, this is only Bobby's third episode. Uh, Hunter's been around the whole season. Uh, are are you fans of, of this duo? Yeah, I was, yeah. I did. I, I to- they were characters I completely forgot were in the show. And then <laughs> I remembered her because she, I, I feel like I'm spoiling it, but she, is she Mockingbird? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we knew that. Issue, yeah. yeah. So they had a whole You're issue. You're doing really good with, so far. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they had a whole issue with the MCU when um, Hawkeye came out, and it was like because his wife was Mockingbird in that as well. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. how can that be Mockingbird when Barton's mentioned in it? But anyway, yeah. a whole other thing. Um, yeah. yeah, dude, because she was also cast as Wonder Woman at one point, wasn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I actually remember that more than uh, I remembered Agents of Shield. But yeah, I do quite like the couple. Yeah. I've never seen because like, her Wonder Woman, which I, I think it like is. I didn't they re- I think they released the pilot. Maybe they like, released the pilot on YouTube, YouTube yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, I would like to watch that because I'm sure she'd be really good. Uh, but okay, then we have the, the just de- depressing arc of this episode, which is Fitzsimmons. Um, you know, ask she asks his help to repair the drive. It's just so awkward and sad. And and what breaks my heart about, especially this scene, is that in all of season one, all they do is finish each other's sentences, and now it's not happening anymore and she's getting it right and it's frustrating him and it's just like it's just so sad tony what were you feeling yeah exactly what you said i knew we were going to be going down this road you know when i saw last episode when their reunion was just so full of sadness and angst and now yeah watching watching them try and be who they were uh and not be able to because of his insecurity her insecurity his transparency and like just his his heart on his sleeves is like very visceral and and difficult to sit with so uh yeah it's it's brutal it's brutal to watch and you know sky had to leave i have some thoughts about the her interaction with mac later um Mm -hmm. we'll wait till we get there but uh yeah yeah it's uh it's heartbreaking Mm -hmm. Um, Paul, at this at this point in the show, um, because I, I always like to check in with Tony and ask if he's shipping anyone. Um, and mm. and and so uh I, I know that for me and season two, this interaction is just so heartbreaking that I'm just like, I just want them to to somehow fall in love, but how could they ever? They were friends and now they're not even friends. Do you do you, do you are you are you like that? Do you get into the romance or potential romances of things? 
Do you feel that? Not really, like, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> even, even in like House of the Dragon, where like, I must just not pick up on romantic cues at all because I remember <laughs> House of the Dragon season two, there were people saying like Alison and um, Rhaenyra were clearly in love and stuff. And I'm like, uh, what do you, I'm doing breakdowns on this show. Have I missed something? <laughs> um, yeah. I just, obviously, you can kind of see the connection with um, Fitz and Simmons. Is she called Gemma? Am I misremembering that? Gemma, right. yeah, it's Gemma. It's Gemma. Yeah. <sighs> So, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm retroactively putting stuff on them, but I've mm. obviously seen, you know, how that arc goes. Um, and it, it is kind of nice that their co-workers at the moment who, you know, had a, had a little, they've been through some tense stuff and they're trying to get back on board with it, but it's just not not fitting together. And then Max got to be like the um, sort of the go-between, almost mm. of like sorting things out with them, repairing mm. the cracks and kind of, explaining you know why it's why things are different mm -hmm, yeah. which i do i actually do think i picked up on a lot of stuff without needing to see the other the other episodes which i think is this sign of a well-written show where i can kind of just dive in and be like oh yeah it's it all makes sense and i remember all this now <laughs> absolutely cool. I, I i promise audience i will not bring this up every single week of season two but uh but this but this whole the juxtaposition you're talking about and when you're talking about queer things that you don't see i i thought mac was gay and like the, like this whole season i i just genuinely thought like that he loved fits <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with yeah. me but like this episode especially i'm like look how cute they are i i don't know i was shipping that too but i, I think i was kind of alone in that one um but um <laughs> I also like the juxtaposition that's going on between Fitzsimmons and Hunter and Bobby, like like two separate duos that are reconnecting in very different ways. And and to me, that's kind of what makes this episode interesting. But uh, then, but speaking of two people connecting, oh, we get more Sky and Ward. Um, and like bring, I wrote my notes, bringing up the fucking well again. So sick of <laughs> well. I think the well is like it's like one of my least favorite episodes of season one. I uh, just I <laughs> like Ward's like giving the bait, and it's just it just every like it just. I'm so glad we'll get to it at the end, but I'm so glad he's out of that cage. I'm so sick of these one on ones. Yes. Um. Uh, do, do Paul? I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on this? I think Ward, it, he was always kind of a weird character for me because I'd really like the twist where he was revealed to be part of Hydra. And then I kind of feel like they didn't know exactly what to do next with him. That's always kind of the feeling I got. They, they kind of were like, right, we're going to secretly make this guy a Hydra agent. He, we've done the twist. We've done the reveal. He gets captured. Oh, what do we do now? Like, what's the next arc from that? And I, I, I always kind of had a bit of a frustration with him. Um, and I think that's sort of why they introduced like the brother and the, so much of the kids stuff. It's kind of like, we, we don't know what, where, we, where we're going to go forward with it. So we kind of have to look back with the character and do all these bits with the well. Uh, yeah. So it's, it, I think they kind of get lose their footing a bit because all this stuff doesn't really add that much to Ward. No. You're kind of just like he had a messed up childhood. We don't need to see a flash like fleshed out so much. Um, mm. And do we need his brother, who's a senator? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Tony, it seems like you're agreeing with. That yeah, idea. yeah. No, I think Paul makes a great point. It does feel like they're, in order to continue to keep Ward a functional character, they've got to start making up some new stuff. Or you know, this whole uh, regarding him being uh, the relationship between him and Sky being gross. When he said the line about her father, he loves you. I can't fault him for that. I just wanted to throw the remote at the TV screen because I was like, "You're so quit saying yeah, yucky shit." Uh, I really didn't like that. Uh, yeah, but uh, like he, uh, yes, I do. I do think that they're like making him like leaning into the duplicity of him is not as interesting as what they were doing, which is just having him sit in a room and beat and tell the truth. Because I like. As, as gross and uh, repellent as he was, the idea of the double crosser, you know, now proving to just be 100% honest, never going to get a chance again, but like a, a, literally a truth device. Now they're, they're kind of, they, during this episode, they're trying to make us guess if he's lying or if his brother is lying. And I was like, well, you're kind of undoing what was, what was becoming interesting about the character. Yeah, what? I think when they do this sort of thing, it's always kind of that they're trying to recapture Silence of the Lambs and have um, mm. sort of Hannibal yes. Lecter Clarice relationship. The, the face. Where they yeah. just 
yeah they just never quite never quite get the dramatic mm -hmm. tension right mm -hmm. and and even the editing almost could be compared to that because right. like the the uh, which is uh, that's a really good com comparison i also feel like the one thing i will give it the whole ward versus ward truth thing is that i i kind of see it as like our ward ward prime as i've decided to call him uh i think that whatever whether i don't think he's lying i think that he believe he believes what he's saying whether or not that's the truth and that and Col we'll talk about this later but colson did call him a deluded son of a bitch for a reason <laughs> like yeah like the guy really sees things the way he wants to see them clearly he said he told colson he thought they were making progress <laughs> like what the fuck are you Ooh. talking about Ooh. oh yeah but we will get to that because right we're now, that. We're, yeah we're in japan uh hopefully tony and i will be in japan in uh in april uh awesome. we'll see yeah we want star wars celebration going down in april um oops lost my camera um so bobby's trying this old cover and uh this is kind of cute uh we get we get we hear the line don't die out there all right um that's a uh, uh he it's said again later in the episode kind of a cute little thing that we should uh we should bookmark um she speaks japanese she kisses this guy like okay but i like that it doesn't it doesn't really bother hunter like may tries to poke the bear a little bit but i i do think that hunter is like secure enough that uh um his ex-wife is making out with somebody that's the least of his worries Secure enough is the exact right way to put it mm -hmm. yes um and then uh i love when may says hunter you know i don't like you right <laughs> good line yeah we need to keep um, this conversation going yes but the cover's blown oh no um uh, they let's see may steps in hunter saves bobby um uh, the, we've got the line the word peacocking which i always like to hear that word i think it's a funny word um and then we get a little fight i like that they're fighting in front of may because the last person you want to have a, like a little lover's quarrel with in front of is melinda may really i think that, that that's who i'd prefer to have a fight with because i know she's going to be quiet she's not going to interject fair but i think i'd be embarrassed like ah. like you know sure you you, oh, you, you want her to think you're cool yeah, yeah, Paul. If yeah. you were gonna get into a lovers' fight in front of a shield character, who would be your first option? Oh, these are the questions. Hard hitting questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fitz, maybe, because he looks like he's dealing with his own stuff, and I think it would make me feel better by the end of it, being like, "Oh, well, at right. least it's not that bad." Okay. It might make him feel better too. It might be like, "Oh, yeah. I'm not the only one having yeah. a hard time." Yeah. Like, like Gemma as well. She's kind of she has like a crazy arc in this episode because she's she's sort of like really upset about fit and like really struggling and kind of like crying and stuff and then she just sees ward and it's like if i ever see you again i'll kill you and then <laughs> goes back to like moping around and crying but like yeah just i feel like she's just taking all that you know tension off her shoulders there it's like what are you saying you're, you're not like this Gemma. you don't say stuff like this yeah, yeah uh, when we get to the history portion of the show, uh, Brett Dalton actually had a good quote about that line because it is an interesting okay. line. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to that because it's a, it's an interesting moment for sure. Um, but Fitz and Gemma, um, you know, were there um, and she gets this thing like, I'm not trying to treat you any differently, but I am differently. And then they kind of have it out a little bit. You left, I need help. You gave up on me. Um, and you think I'm useless. You gave up on me. Yeah. You gave up on me. <laughs> gave up on me, Gemma. Yeah. It is sad. Uh, like, like, how could? What else can I say? Like, you know, mm. I think it's really good writing. This, and remember, this was written by the person currently writing the Penguin. Like, uh, okay. that's somebody who knows what they're doing. I think yeah. when it comes to writing uh, characters. Yeah, good dramatic scene. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, then we get Mac up in there. Okay, so then we have what I wrote in my notes: Colson and Big Ward. Um, Go off, Colson. Go off. I love it so yeah. much. Mm -hmm. Like, I have your brother in my basement. <laughs> okay. Um, we kind of touched oh, sorry, on Sorry, I, I, I jumped the gun. I thought we were talking about him uh, talking to Ward in the jail cell. You know, we've got Ward Prime. We've got Big Ward. Uh, no, he, he goes to see uh, the senator first. And uh, uh, I do I do like Colson in the scene. You can still say go off Colson because uh, it's, it's not what great. I meant. He is yeah. great, but yeah, I'll wait. Um, I'll do it again we, in a minute. Yeah, we 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 really touched on this whole thing already, but the <laughs> the editing I think really uh, is is what makes this this all work. Um, yeah. And uh, but but 
uh, meanwhile, Ward the Prime tells Sky like that uh, her dad um, like killed Hydra agents, and uh, we learn that Sky's mom is dead. Uh, we learn that like he, he cracked. Uh, honestly, like I'm just so interested to see more Kyle McLaughlin. So we, Paul, we have met Kyle McLaughlin. We know he's Sky's dad, but Sky has yet to meet him. Um, okay. So yeah. And uh, and I just, but as far as the scene goes, I just wrote my notes. This man is delusional, which is before I remembered that that Colton indeed called him that. Um, yeah. But uh, I just, it's this whole scene is just like I just can't imagine. Like there, it, it gives me the ick because I know there are men like this. There are men that like, you know, I saw a tweet yesterday. Uh, Paul knows. Paul has to be on Twitter all day, just like me. That like, and it was like. Um, I need help. My uh, a woman on Instagram, a young woman on Instagram, manipulated me into having an affair, and now I need, um, and now I need help getting my wife back. And it's like, first of all, maybe own up to your mistakes, bro. That's really yeah. funny. Yeah, You're, he was the victim. He fucked this girl. <laughs> oh dear. That's if Ward was tweeting, he'd tweet things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Uh, oh god, I'm so mad at that dick. All right, <laughs> carry on. Um, Don't be mad at him. Be mad at Sky. <laughs> yeah, <What>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. She she used her her sexual her prowess. feminine wiles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she lured him. <laughs> tempted. Yeah, he was um, trying to stick to the mission. Mm -hmm. um, this is the point in the episode where I was like, Vincent Becker's designed the bombs, and it's Ju Julian's grandfather, and uh, but he's 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 taking agents in like i honestly this whole thing paul did you feel this were you were, like i know that you also haven't watched the ones before it in a while did you feel the confusion here yeah i think when they just start throwing names of characters who aren't in an episode it does it, especially when it's clearly next because when you're coming up with characters when you're writing like i've written stories when i was like 16 and stuff like that maybe 14 if we've been generous but you just come up with random names and you can tell when someone's just came up with a name for a character and it just sounded like stuff like that and i was like i don't know who any of these are so just switch off mentally <laughs> yeah. yeah they're trying a little too hard to, to do to do moves they're trying they kind of really want to do their their whole twist thing and it's it's just a, a bridge too far there's just too much stuff mm -hmm. All right, Tony. Now you can get excited because it's when okay. uh, when I thought you were rebuilding trust. You are not, nor will you ever be on my team. You deluded son of a bitch. Yes, go off, Jamie. <laughs> I I want that on a T-shirt. Deluded son of a bitch. You deluded son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Tony decided. I don't know if I'm, anyone saw this. I'm sure our listeners did because I know they're checking Clark Gregg's Instagram stories every day. But Clark Gregg shared an amazing childhood throwback photo, um, uh, and and Tony wants to put it on a T-shirt and make that the Valido T-shirts. Um, I yeah. wish I wish we had pulled it up because Paul, I'm sure you're not checking Clark Gregg's Instagram stories every day. Hourly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgive me. Uh, I I should have known. Um, all right, so before we get to the uh, the final uh, bit of the episode, we're gonna take a quick 30 second break. Um, I normally would say fill up your drinks, but I don't think you should be drinking at this time of day. Um, you, uh, I'm not going to encourage that, but uh, take a little 30 second breather, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Love yes! and Hydra. <laughs> Clark, you stood. Oh, we are here with Paul from Heavy Spoilers talking A Fractured House. Um, uh, we just had the big moment where uh, Ward gets a little uh, what's coming to him. Um, but over in the Netherlands, um, uh, that's where they are, right? The, the, um, the Netherlands, yes. I'm pretty sure. Um, they've been set up. There's a showdown. Turns out old Julian Beckers, that guy who we understood his place in this film, uh, was, it was set up. He's actually working in, around Hydra. This uh, agent safe house is not a safe house at all. Um, no. uh, it's an unsafe I wrote, house. 
I know. Oh, who could have saw this coming? I put in my notes, good headbutt from Lady. Does anyone remember <laughs> what that means? <laughs> I don't remember a Lady headbutt, but I'm glad you liked it, Jamie. <laughs> uh, Paul, can you decipher my notes? What am I talking about? I actually had a weird moment because because of the hairstyle um, uh -huh. and not recognizing one of the characters, but judging off the fashion, I actually thought this was a flashback moment for some reason. I thought it was oh. Ward talking, Ward and his brother talking about his family, and then they flash back to like his dad and his mother and whatever it was. <laughs> this uh, is them doing reason, too much. I thought thought yeah. the 1940s for some reason. Um, and <laughs> that then, wouldn't make sense. Uh, so think, how old is Ward? Uh, <laughs> but yeah. So I started thinking that, but then obviously the the people bust in and they threw that little disc things that melt people. I don't know mm. if that's that useful though. I mean, if is you it miss. good? Yeah. Well, yeah, you can miss, but also, do you not want to leave bodies to let people know that you're like a really scary organization? Are you just going to walk in and be like, oh, I did something happen here? There's no bodies or anything. <laughs> It's like uh, in Buffy when they like the way a vampire gets dusted. It's like you just gotta yeah. sweep them up, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I, 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 just, I think part of it too is because we uh, in earlier episodes we kind of know that Doctor Whitehall is trying to kind of mass produce a weapon using like the whatever the obelisk is because uh, we don't know. Uh, but these splinter bombs are scary. But you're right. If you're not witnessing it, you're like, where'd my friend go? Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I gotta, I gotta sweep up in here. It's so dirty in look, here. Yeah, look for them forever. Yeah, <laughs> that's so sad. Um, I, uh, I really. Uh, if, it I la like... if it lands anywhere on you, does it completely just kill you? What, like, what's it... the time on it? If it hits you and you get it out quick enough, are you okay? Oh, good question. Uh, what's the... yeah. Well, yeah. If it hits a tree, does move. the tree disintegrate? Mm. Whoa, <laughs> we're asking big questions. I mean, in the in the first episode when Hartley. Um, uh, holds the obelisk. It goes slow for her through her hand. So I think it, it back to the Buffy vampire stuff. It's like when a no name vampire sees the sun, they explode instantly. But if Angel or Spike see the sun, then they have time to like put on a blanket and uh, <laughs> and protect themselves. Paul, are you a Buffy guy? I bring up Buffy a lot. Yeah, but it's like I, I watched it all. But it's one of those things. I just yeah. My, my memory at the moment is just. As long as I've seen it and I've done a massive deep dive on it, I can retain all that information. But the second that I'm not covering it anymore, it's like, what's this show? Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta just keep the space. Um, I, I, I like I like the fighting in this episode a lot, just like the fight choreography. I like how well Bobby and Hunter fight together because they they fight together um, like ro like kind of romantically, and they but they but they flow together nicely um, in battle, and I think that's really sexy. Yeah, totally. <laughs> The whip, the whip fight was good as well. But, oh yeah, T Tony liked that. I could tell. Sure did. Pretty good yeah. well. But you've got a weapon that just disintegrates someone, even if they <laughs> block it. Like, just throw that. As long as you hit them, it doesn't matter. Like, put their arm up or something. Just throw that. What, what are you getting a whip out for? Like, it seems like really impractical. And it, I know they staged it in that big, it's a, it's a big room. They basically mm -hmm. fight in a big room because mm -hmm. it allows them to flail about the whip. But mm -hmm. how useful is that if you're not in that room? It's like if you use that in another part of the house, it's you're going to hit the stairs or something and it's going to completely stop. knock your shot off. Yeah. <laughs> not worth it. Just throw the disc thingy if you've got that. That makes good, good points. Mm -hmm. But then May would be dead, and what would be the point of this? Yeah, then ultimately, <laughs> yes, we all know that's that's the case. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then, uh, okay, Ward's gone. Goodbye. Uh, I literally wrote my notes. Close the file on Ward. Tony could be. The, would this be the last we see of Grant Ward? No, we're not yeah. that lucky. <laughs> all right. Yes, and then uh, you alluded to this earlier, but the Mac, the Mac and Simmons scene, um, which I really like, uh, which mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, that guy you wishing he would be, I never met him. And like, it's like, oh, like, I love you, Mac, but like, calm down. You Like, you weren't there. And I I'm, understand I'm like, that he feels, yeah, he feels protective, but like, it's still like, no, no, bro, you were not in that bottom of the ocean with them. But I, but I, but then, um, you know, the only thing that makes them worse is you. I know. Why do you think I left, Tony? How did you feel about that? Well, 
it's just it, I feel like uh, I, I didn't like that Matt was uh, upset, like like called her out for walking away, right? Because I think okay to do that. Like I I was at no part at no point did I feel like Gemma walking away from her scene with uh, with um, Fitz was 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 rude or insensitive. It's like. I feel like that was an important, is a necessary thing to do. Sometimes you do just have to take a minute and walk away. That's the thing that I really didn't like about it. It's like her getting called out for that. I'm like, well, sometimes you just have, that's what you got to do for yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to just do that. Uh, and she really, in her scene, the fits, tried very, very hard to stay level and not take offense to what, by what he was saying and, and, and be rational. And she just kind of hit a wall with it. Uh, and, so I do think Mac's uh, perspective is a little one-sided. Um, I think he's a very lovely and, and conscientious guy. Like he's showed so much patience and, and, and respect to Fitz, but also treating him like a person. So uh, I'm, I'm down with having him as an emotional mediator for this show. But uh, I was like not totally on board with what he was saying to her. Mm. Paul, do you have any, any piggyback thoughts on that? Yeah, it's, it's weird seeing Mac in this kind of role because obviously I know what he grows to eventually um, and just seeing him as kind of like a sort of best friend of the, the pair who's kind of like trying to sort the relationship out. I'm like, you could be doing a bit more with this character. You know, he's quite a big belt dude. He's very muscly, he's sort of, he's built for action roles. And I'm like, oh, it's weird seeing Mac back in this kind of go-between role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, but like he's just so sweet. I just want to give him a hug. As yeah. Defrosted Robot seventy seven says in the comments, it's a complex situation. No real easy answers here. And you know what? Sure. That brings me back to the, like the writing on the Penguin. Like the, this is these are this is someone who knows how to write. Because like, like who am I rooting for in the Penguin? I can't decide because like I, I mm. they're I, they're making me love Sophia so much. And uh, and it's I think it's the same kind of thing with Fitz and and Simmons. It's like it it, it just sucks. Sometimes uh, people grow apart and bad things happen. Um, and yeah. speaking of bad things, Ward, um, uh, he, he has that walk of shame. I love the walk of shame. And uh, and as Paul um, brings up earlier, um, if I ever see you again, I'll kill you. Um, I also really like that when Talbot and May shake hands, I like when Talbot is like a reasonable person. Uh, Paul, are you a Talbot yeah. fan? Yeah, I do like Talbot. No, yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I really like Talbot. Um, mm -hmm. He was another character I was actually uh, surprised to see this early on. Because mm -hmm. in my head, I've got him like, Oh, he appears much later in the series, but it was nice seeing him here. Um, and he's kind of like he he hates Shield, but then he's sort of like those son of a bitches. They saved my life, and you can see him starting to to come around to the idea that they might not be all bad. So yeah, I do I really like Talbot as well. Mm -hmm. It takes it. Yeah. I tell you what, it takes as a man who's you know my facial hair is quite poor. It's quite weak. <laughs> it takes a certain kind of it takes a certain kind of man to pull off a mustache. And, yeah, uh, it's not it's not easy. It's not easy, guys. Like any men watching this will know. Yeah, any men watching this will know what I mean. And you know, you've got to have the right kind of face to pull one off. But he does a fantastic job. Yeah, I agree. I always you say watching that, this. Yeah, uh, what, yeah. Year, when I turned thirty, um, you know, a few years back, uh, it was like something clicked in my brain, and I instantly started being attracted to mustaches. Like it, it was nice. so weird. Like I w never was, and then I turned thirty, and. Um, uh, Jeff Ward, who we don't, who Tony, don't, Tony will not know for many years. That same summer, he got a mustache, and it was like my brain would like got rewired. <laughs> okay, uh, so I do, I do love a mustache, and Talbot is the is the best of that. Um, uh, and this, this, this is where I, I get, I could go the off on this for a long time, but I won't. <laughs> He's the best of the like mustache. It is a good yeah, mustache. It's good. It's really good. Well, what's the guy um, from Malcolm P? I called again. Tom Selleck. Selleck. He's yeah, the king Tom of Selleck. Selleck. Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, wow. This whew, it's early in the morning, but whoo. -hoo. Um <laughs> uh, so uh one uh, this this part annoys me where Colson's like, don't give him an inch, and then uh instantly he escapes. Like we it's like the thing, like, how come you're only transporting Michael Myers on Halloween? Like it's that kind of shit where where it's like I don't know like somebody they should have had him in better handcuffs or like uh, or like in a in like Hannibal Lecter they should have Hannibal Lectured him 
Um, yeah. it's like I, this, I think this is stupid. It uh, is stupid. Nobody, oh. nobody knew. Like Agent May wasn't like you know he can dislocate his thumb and shit. Like that's a thing they teach us. Like nobody like uh, clocked that he could slide out of regular old handcuffs. So I'm I'm a little annoyed. <laughs> I was like I was watching it happen. I was like, is that it? That's his. That's how he's gonna get out of there. Pop the doop. Yeah. Yeah. They. I feel like they had like the the interns on security that day. Just uh, all the other guards were kind of like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, and then, okay, the end tag. Uh, we got this guy coming into a tattoo shop, and he's got the carvings tattooed all over him. And this is a really interesting scene. Um, and I have some thoughts uh, as someone who's heavily tattooed. But before I get into my specific tattoo thoughts, um, Tony, I, you kind of like had like a, a reaction when he took off his shirt. Um, what, what were you thinking in that moment? I, I thought, ooh. Uh, it's, <laughs> Very it's complex feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Not a great design. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Um, so, yeah, I'm, we're containment with the, the, as we know now, a map was on the back of a painting. It didn't get burned. And now this guy's got it on his body. Is he invincible? I don't know. But uh, I recognize that guy. I forget, uh, I forget his name, uh, the actor. But he's in uh, this movie that Jamie and I both love more than everybody else called Basic. Uh, which is like this th uh, action thriller with John Travolta and Sam Jackson from like early 2000s. It's directed mm -hmm. by John McTiernan. It is a crazy, overly twisty plot, but I love that movie and he's in it. And so I was excited to see that guy. Uh, mm -hmm. and he's another stuff. He's in like Confidence and he's in uh, House of Wax, the 2000s one. He's a, he's a cool actor. I'm, I'm happy he's around. Yeah, I read that um, Jed and Moe, the showrunners, like wanted him. Like they, 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 used, they called his name out a lot. Um, uh, wanted to cast him, and then this was the role they found for him. Paul, have you seen the film Basic? No. Okay. Right. Um, I feel like as a spoilers guy, it would just like annoy the shit out of you, like because it's right, like okay. it's like it is a hat on a hat of twists, but like it's very contrived. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know nice. this about me, but I'm I'm John Travolta's number one fan, so um, uh, I will always go to bat for uh, this movie, <laughs> this other movie with Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. yeah, I like it, John Travolta. I get mm. that. Great. <laughs> That's my John Travolta impression. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Um, okay, yeah. that, that means we you're you're allowed to be invited back now. Um, did you have thoughts on this <laughs> tattoo shop scene? I, do, I I felt like he popped up before. I don't know why in my head because I'm obviously like aware that I can't remember stuff, and I'm trying to fill in what, and I'm making up backstories for people. And in my head, I, I was I was genuinely wondering if he popped up in like other episodes and had also got bits of the tattoo like mm -hmm. then stinger for the past yeah. three episodes had been in popping popping up and getting more added to the tattoo because the guy mm -hmm. knew him and he was like man i told you it's not done yet or something yeah no, yeah this that's is the first kind time of my invented it. backstory <laughs> yeah that's probably i think that that's that's what they want you to think um I just want to say, like, the one because it's true. He's like, "Are you sure it's not healed?" I have had a tattoo two days in a row where, like, the second day it hurts very badly to get tattooed over a fresh tattoo. But my complaint is, it didn't look like a fresh tattoo. Like, it, it no, looked like a healed tattoo. There was no yeah. like it should have been a little redder. If they're gonna make a point to call out. It should be red and maybe a little like I don't know for like a weekend it'd be peely, but it, like on day no day swelling. two it's gonna be swollen like especially all of that. There's gonna be some bruising, um, but you know uh, this. Uh, when it comes to spy stuff, I don't know things, but I know about tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Before I uh, share some history with you both, um, was there anything about this episode else that you wanted to to talk about or share? I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. Paul. Yeah. I want to hear about that line, the killing oh, line. Great. So Brett, Brett Dalton uh, was asked about this at the time, um, uh, basically like, will Gemma kill Ward? And he said, I imagine that if something is set up like that, there's always the possibility of that being fulfilled. It is such a badass thing to see one of the less aggressive agents suddenly become a force to be reckoned with in her own right. Ward believes her. She meant what she said. So, um, Tony, would you want to see Gemma kill Ward? Uh. No, I, I'd rather mm. see. I think I'd rather see Sky do it. Uh, but uh, she, she has, she has the right. She, she, she should like. She should totally be allowed to. Uh, I, I, I agree with the with with you, Paul. That it, it that line does kind of come out of nowhere. Like 
I, I do believe that it's something she would say and it's a, it's a sincere uh, line, but it is, it is kind of out of place of what she's been doing in the, oh, Jamie, nope, Jamie disagrees. I don't agree because she spent this whole episode bubbling up her emotions about what happened to Fitz and Ward did that. Ward, so yeah. like to see him after all that, yeah, no, I, I absolutely believe she'd threaten his life. Okay. Yeah, great. And moving on. Um, so, uh, Paul, you had asked the question, why this whip? What's the point? And that's because Marcus Scarlatti, that character, is the original whiplash in the comics. Um, oh, and, of right. course, yeah, and we have seen another version of that character. I, Ivan Vanko, of course, was Mickey Rourke in Iron Man 2, a different whiplash. So that's oh. that's where that came from. Yeah, I didn't um, know his name. Yeah. He just seemed um, like soldier guy to me. <laughs> yeah, then there. That's kind of what, what he has going on. Um, uh, an interesting tidbit was Avengers: Age of Ultron was supposed to premiere a uh, trailer during this episode, um, but on right. October twenty second, it leaked online. So within a few hours, Marvel just released it on YouTube. But uh, oh. in a response, as like a sorry, ABC, they instead aired unreleased footage from the movie uh, during during the episode. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Which, yeah, which um, I thought was um, uh, a cool thing. I'm so I'm so excited for the 10th anniversary of Age of Ultron. That's one of my favorite movies. I love the movie so much. Um, when is that? Yeah, because uh, it's, it's in May. It's, yeah, it's coming in May. Right. Yeah, that's my shit right there. Um, also, when uh, when the, there's a moment where Hunter says that there's like a brewery around the corner. Um, in it is actually in Bruges uh, is where they are. I forgot um, that there actually like is a local brew brewery with that name. So if 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 he's telling the truth about it being around the corner, um, it like that means we know the safe house is located in the center of Bruges, close to the River Re. Is, I think is how you say it. Um, so I thought that was an interesting little um, thing. Um, okay, so uh, as we wind down, um, we have a special new uh, segment today, a one time only segment. Tony and I were at a wedding in Chicago last weekend, and they had a poet there who mm. wrote poetry um, about you. And so uh, Tony gave them a prompt. Um, Tony, explain uh, what the prompt was and what your poem came out to be. Yeah, yeah, so it was a very lovely wedding and, and they had these two ladies down, it's like this old historic house, and there were two ladies uh, down in the cellar that had like, was like a cool little hangout area and they had little typewriters. And if you gave them prompts, they would uh, write poems. And so I thought, why don't I ask for tribute poem, uh, uh, some words of encouragement for Phil Coulson. So I said, hey, could you uh, write, I wrote in the prompt, uh, I would like a poem about Phil. Uh, it's something, you know, he's, 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 he's got a new job and he's really struggling, he's having a hard time focusing. And like, if you guys could maybe make something for him, I think he'd really like it. And they did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I haven't heard it yet. This is my first time hearing the poem. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's this beautiful little type here, signed. We're like, all right, so. Let's hear it. Um, this it is. Here we go. There's no title. I'll just read it. Uh, when the shadows dark come across your path and rocky ground trips you fallen flat, the sun and stars still own the sky, though still it's dark, the light does try. It counts on you to get back up, to take the step, to get unstuck. The lights unseen still shine a light. The path here soon will become bright. Deep in the woods, you may forget that all your friends have lanterns lit. And as you find your feet again, the light peeks through. You found your friends. For even when you feel alone, when all you can think to do is groan, the path is waiting for you to walk. You can do this still. Don't balk. Wow, that was lovely. It's, I like that like there's a sky reference in there. Kind um, of, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, and I also, the, the line about the woods is actually, Maria, bookmark that so in like five episodes we can talk about how that's going to be relevant. When you were Sorry. reading it, I thought that it sounded like the Green Lanterns pledge thing. Pledge. Oh, it does have Green that Lanterns vibe, thing. doesn't it? But then you mentioned the lantern, I was like, whoa, maybe it <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we, we should uh, we should auction this off when our podcast gets more popular. <laughs> Yeah, five dollars yeah. starting bid. Um, yeah. I, I I do like because Tony didn't make any mention to Marvel or anything in his prompt, uh, so it's it was fun. Just that was really so I, when they, I so they that. she writes Anna writes the poem for me and she reads it and reads it to me and I was like, thank you so much. He's gonna love that. <laughs> you know? yeah. 
<laughs> I had to go all in on that. Um, all right. Uh, before we kick Tony out and have a little, little real quick uh, chat about spoilers, um, Paul, for, for those who might also be leaving, uh, do you have a uh, plug your channel, plug your business, tell people where they can find you. Heavy spoilers. Yeah, just look up heavy spoilers and click all the videos, get them on your homepage, and then once I'm there, you're stuck. You're stuck with <laughs> No matter how much you hit, don't recommend channel. It's too late. I'm in your head. Uh, you got I can't recommend uh, heavy spoilers enough. It's it's a go to oh, when I you. when I, on on our other podcast that shall not be named anymore because it was killed. Paul Paul was on there and uh, always always a pleasure to to chat with you, bud. No, thank you. Um uh Tony, uh who do you want to thank? Oh, I'd like to say our thank yous to Stephanie at Eclectic Muses for doing our artwork and thank you for Ryan Mira of Yellow Pills at Yellow Pills Music on Instagram for doing our music. Thank you to our producer Maria. Thank you, Maria. You're welcome. And thank you, Paul. It was a pleasure to meet you and great talking with you. Yeah, no, you too. Enjoy the rest of the seasons as well. I think you're yeah. have a good time. Yeah. Um, reminder to everyone to follow us at LidoPod on Instagram and Twitter. Like, subscribe, Spotify, YouTube, all those places. Five-star reviews. You know the business. Tony, get out of here. Time to leave the room. Gotta go. Wait. Wait. Um, okay. Uh, real quick, because there's not much in this episode that I feel like, like, oh, this is going to come back later. It's just all building up to the, to the stuff. But I wanted to give you the opportunity, if there was anything spoiler that you've been holding back to discuss, if there's anything you wanted to bring up. Just the stuff with Mac. Yeah, I totally forgot how Mac, you know, you've seen him in his early days, yeah, mending people's relationships, but it foreshadows how he's going to be the person that brings the team together down the line, you know what I mean? Director mm -hmm. of S.H.I.E.L.D., I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice, nice seeing him just being friends with the team, you know, sorting out their problems, getting them together. It's like, yeah, he makes a good leader. It's good that Max here, yeah, because this, this is like – me knowing now that he's yeah. what he's going to grow into and it, it was kind of nice seeing that kind of laid out here mm -hmm. i i totally agree I, I didn't even really think about that but like he does they they do give him leadership qualities because i don't know for sure but i highly doubt at this moment in time they knew he was going to eventually be the director i'm sure they had no yeah. idea so i think yeah. it got to a point where it was like who could we make the leader it's like yeah uh, mac is it? yeah <laughs> you can do yeah. like brian the nice broken in game of thrones but fits a lot better. oh yeah Oh yeah, that way better. Um, so you you did mention he was your favorite character. Do you have like a favorite season or arc? Like I'm such a framework girly. Um, I can't remember. I always remember him having a cool shotgun. That's what yeah, I remember about the, the guy. Not really mm -hmm. an arc there, but um, <laughs> yeah, just the way he held the team together. I think when you get into the later seasons as well, he's kind of the go-to. He, he's like the strong, steady guy who's part of the team and everyone's kind of falling apart and he, he's the one who brings it all together. And yeah, it was just nice seeing the guy's early days because I, I obviously haven't went back and watched this stuff since seeing season seven. Mm -hmm. um, I do own all the steel books though, if you want them. Yeah, I, I saw you said the picture. Yeah. Yeah, I say all the steel books. I've got three, and I've got some well, Blu-rays, and then they stopped making it. They stopped. Yeah, that's uh, everyone's mad about that. I, I think it's six and seven don't have them, which is really yeah. frustrating. Um, nearly imported that... some from Japan, and it was like two hundred dollars. <laughs> nearly, I was like, uh, is it worth Crazy. it? Crazy. Yeah, I mean, if, if it wasn't on Disney Plus, it would be. Do you? Is it on Disney Plus where you are? I know that the, the yeah. Different. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it's uh, different everywhere. Um, uh, yeah, uh, is before we go, anything else? Anything you wanna wanna say about the wide world of Agents of Shield? I don't know. I'm out of focus, but I've got myself back in. Um, <laughs> yeah. What? Well, I mean, I can't remember how Ward dies. That was another thing because I know he dies, but I can't remember how it happens. And I was thinking, um, like, oh, is it right after this bit, or is it another season he has? Or it's in season three. Coulson kills him on Mavith. He like crushes him with his super strong hand. And that's wow. when Ward comes back as Hive. And then he dies again as Hive at the end of the of the season three. So yeah. then season season four, he comes back briefly in the framework, and then we never see that man again. Oh, it's so. a shame because it does, yeah. That, that, I mean, that's yeah. kind of what I was saying before. It, it felt yeah. almost like they didn't know what to do with the character. And mm. they're just kind of giving him whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. A hundred percent. I I I wish he would have. They would have found room for him in season seven in some way. Be, just because I love Brett Dalton. I hate Ward, but I love Brett Dalton. And uh, yeah, he's great. He, 
Yeah, and he's a part of their their family. Um, before we go, I, I saw that insert Amy Acker reference in the chat is asking um, where I am going to be talking about the final episode of Agatha. And for that, I will say go check Brandon Davis's Twitter page because there's a very special video that dropped this morning. Um, uh, a little reunion of sorts will be happening. So check that out. Um, thanks to everyone so much for listening. Thanks to everyone who woke up early to come in the chat. Um, and shout out to those who, um, I think we've got um, you know, some people from the UK. I think uh, someone from Australia is up in here. So uh, we love that so much. Um, we'll be back next week um, uh, again on our Patreon, talking episode 10 of Firefly. And then two weeks, we've got writer Craig Titley on to talk episode seven. Um, have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thank you again, Paul. Yeah, thank you.